Welcome to another edition of the Teen Idol series, Ranking the Albums and Songs. Uh, today's artist is none other than Andy Gibb as we close out our three part series. Obviously, we did Sean Cassidy and Life Garrett already, and uh, this one is uh, for Andy Gibb. Um, odd thing about these three guys is they all, all their debut albums came out in 1977. So uh, very interesting. You know, these guys were <laughs> the main guys that dominated pretty much everything from 77. You know, you saw them everywhere for a couple of years until their um, rapid decline and fade away from the public limelight there. Uh, so let's begin. Andy Gibb, born in 1958. Obviously, he uh, has music in his genes, as he's the younger brother of Barry Maurice and Robin Gibb, who were known as the Bee Gees. And uh, other than music, uh, Gibb was noted for um, co-hosting the TV show Solid Gold, and he did some acting and performed in a couple productions. That would be the Pirates of Penzance and Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. So... He did a lot in a short period of time of his fame there. Um, he ended up with nine top 40 hits and with six of those reaching the top 10, including three number ones. So let's get into these albums here. We're going to dig right in and uh, going to start it off with uh, none other than our number three choice. He's got three albums. Uh, number three is the last one he released, which came out in 1980, uh, After Dark. Uh, it only reached number 21, which at that time was considered very disappointing, uh, considering how his uh, first two albums did, how well they did. Uh, so after this album didn't perform as needed by the record company, uh, RSO Records, uh, dropped Gibb from the label. Um, you know, uh, Olivia Newton-John was one of the biggest performers around this time, having starred in Greece and was have a, had her own special good career going there, solo career. But even she couldn't salvage this album. She does have a pair of duets on this album along with Andy, uh, I Can't Help It, and of course, Rest Your Love on Me. And those uh, those two uh, songs both feature um, Olivia Newton-John, and just oddly enough that uh, that they didn't uh, do too good. I mean, I can't help it did make number twelve, but that was uh, that was as high as that one would would make right there. Um, the highest single. For this album was the first one that was released desire reaching all the way up to number four a um, couple of the highlights uh definitely uh the rest your love on me was was a good one that was a bg song that uh they redid and um the other the other song that uh that i thought was really good was warm ride which in essence, was a Bee Gees song that was recorded and released later on down the road during their career. But Warm Ride was the last song that was recorded for the album, and the backing vocals were done by none other than Barry Gibb. So After Dark, uh, despite all the star power on it, just didn't perform as expected, only reaching gold. Um and that's why it's our number three. It just wasn't as good as the first two albums. So from there, we go down to number two. And that will be none other than Shadow Dancing, the second Andy Gibbs solo album, which came out 1978. Uh, reached number seven. So that makes it his highest charting album. And it did reach platinum. The songs on here that uh, stand out for us is Our Love Don't Throw It All Away, which was a big radio song, and Waiting For You, which closes out the album in pretty good style. Um, he did have one notable song on here, though, which uh, <laughs> definitely uh, the title track, Shadow Dancing, um, which helped make, make history here because he became the first male solo artist to have three consecutive number one singles on the Billboard 100 with 
all of the weeks at the top of the chart happening in less than a calendar year. So uh, interesting, interesting enough that he released only those three singles during that period and all three topped the charts. So that was a feat <laughs> you don't see every day there. And we're going to have another staff for you a little later on. It's going to be kind of uh, unique because it's been yet to be, uh, you know, topped, oddly enough. Um, so, yeah, Shadow Dancing, a solid album. Has a lot of good cuts on here, and we'll get into some of those when we get into our top 10 songs for sure. Okay. And so the next album will be his best album, what we feel is number one album out of the three, and that's the debut, Flowing Rivers, which um, came out 1977. Uh, it reached number 19. And it did reach platinum. Of course, this was the album that introduced the world to Andy and um, boasts the two number one hits. And I just want to be your everything and love is thicker than water. Like uh, those were the first two of the trilogy there. And um, oddly enough, those are also the same two songs that uh, the Eagles guitarist Joe Walsh is a guest on this album and plays those on those two two songs there. So that was uh, very interesting how both of them hit number one. So, uh, yeah, Joe Walsh and them, the Eagles, were finishing up recording in the studio, as legend has it, the same studio that Andy was recording his album in. So they got to talking, and they got Joe Walsh to play on a couple tracks, and um, the rest is history. All right, so um, interesting note with about Love is Thicker Than Water, which uh, was written with... Uh, Andy and Barry Gibb, uh, as evidence of the Gibb Brothers' U.S. chart domination in 78, atop the March 4th, 1978 Hot 100, the Bee Gees' Staying Alive was knocked off the top of the charts by Love is Thicker Than Water, which in turn, two weeks later, the Bee Gees returned to the top of the charts with uh, Night Fever, also from the Saturday Night Live soundtrack. Which in turn, eight, displaced eight weeks later by Yvonne Elliman's If I Can't Have You. So that makes the uh, only person in history to write four consecutive U.S. number one singles who had a hand in all four of these songs was none other than Barry Gibb. And that's a feat that is unmatched to this day. So very interesting. It just goes to show you how... Uh, how important Barry was to Andy's career because he definitely helped him out immensely. Um, and it was great to see, uh, you know, he took an interest in trying to help his brother out here and getting him on the road here. Uh, so interesting, yeah, interesting stat right there. So that will take care of the albums there. Um, so now we're going to get into the top 10 songs. And, uh, started off with a song that comes from shadow dancing none other than good feeling song written by andy uh just a great song uh really enjoy uh enjoy this one here um just puts you in a good mood and it's a good song to start the day with so it's definitely one of those feel good songs for sure <laughs> hence the title <laughs> All right, so that's going to take us to number nine, which is Words and Music, which came from his debut. It's a song he brought with him. Uh, he recorded it a couple of years before uh, Flowing Rivers came out, but um, it was released like, like over in um, Australia, and it just didn't, uh, was never released anywhere else um, at that point. But a uh, good song, you know, it's it's second song on the album, Come kicks right in there. Um, you know, did reach 78 on the Australian charts and back in 1975 was, was when he originally recorded it. But um, he redid it for the uh, Flowing Rivers album and uh, never released that one as a single again. But he had such stronger material on there to, to release at that point. So probably why he didn't bother doing it again. All right, so that's number nine. Number eight is going to be Starlight, which comes from the debut as well. 
and uh, another solid song uh just love this flowing rivers album it it just has that it flows just like a river from song to song it really is a strong strong debut definitely one of the more underrated debuts you don't hear people talk too much about this one uh these days but it's definitely uh overall very very solid debut and starlight is one of the reasons why uh number seven we're going to go back to shadow dancing for um an everlasting love which peaked at number five written by barry gibb and um it was the uh follow-up to shadow dancing and uh man had it gone just four more spots higher it could have been his fourth consecutive number one but as it was it's still a solid number five and definitely uh helped propel that album along to its uh platinum status and the best-selling album of his career there highest charting as well all right so that will take us to number six which is i just want to be your everything off the debut written by barry gibb uh, what can be said about that one? A number one classic, uh, the song that put him on the map, hit number one for three weeks, and uh, you know, just a solid, uh, solid song, and uh, comes in at number six for us. And that's going to take us to our top five. Number five itself is going to be "Come Home for the Winter." Just love this song. Uh, this is definitely one of those ones that stands out on Flowing Rivers for me. Just a great, great song. As is the uh, number four song. The title track from Flowing Rivers. None other than Flowing Rivers. Quickly paced uh, three and a half minute song that uh, just goes right along. And uh, you know, it's one of the best mel melodic songs he wrote throughout his career there. And that's uh, number four for us. Number three, of course, is none other than Love is Thicker Than Water, which uh, Andy earned a co-write with, but it was mainly written by Barry. Uh, solid song. That was one of those songs that the first time you heard it, you knew it was just a, a gem. Uh, second single from the album. And, of course, the second number one. So now we're going to go down to our top two. So these songs might surprise you because they're not really considered his biggest hits. So we start off with our number two, which is Time is Time, which comes from the Greatest Hits album. It was one of three new songs that were added to the album at that time, you know, as opposed to give um, the fans some new material and... Uh, you know, so you're not buying this. He's only had three albums out at that point, but they figure put a greatest hit song out with a few new ones. It might help sell some more albums. And sure enough, that did the trick as time as time reached number 15. Um, great song, uh, catchy melody and one of those songs that uh, sticks with you. And uh, surprise at number one for me. But um, this song probably is um, it's to me that it's the best ballad on he's ever recorded Andy Gibb and uh he wrote the song once again it comes from the greatest hits album that came out in 1980 and it also is his top it did reach the top 40 peaking at number 40 making it his final top 40 hit he had one other hit uh that came out in uh 1981 which was didn't come up, didn't play on any of his albums. All I have to do is dream the Everly Brothers song that he did a duet with Victoria Principal at the time who he was dating. Um, that song didn't crack the top forty. It only reached as high as number fifty one, and it was never released on an album, unfortunately. Uh, but good. Uh, getting back to me without you, just just a tremendous song. Um, it's definitely the one that stands out the, the most for me. I just, uh, you know, if you never heard it, definitely give it a listen. I'm sure you'll agree that it's definitely one of, uh, if not his best vocal performance, uh, just just a phenomenal song for sure. So that, that rounds out our top 10. And um, interesting note on our top 10, only five of the top 10 songs uh, never charted. So that... We can hope we gave you a good variety there, but these are definitely the way we rank them and the way we see them. And, 
you know, a short career, but nonetheless, a solid career for three albums worth of material here from Andy Gibb. And that will close out our Teen Idol series. Stay tuned for many more. Um, we're going to start working these uh, rankings in, in kind of like a series format somewhat. We started uh, doing our hair band series. We started with Poison. Look for that video. It's already out, up and running. Stay tuned for more from the hair band series. We're going to be doing uh, Twisted Sister. We're going to rank those albums. We're going to rank uh, Quiet Riot. We're going to rank Dokken and Rat. So stay tuned. Many, many more albums to be ranked on our channel here. We'll also be ranking some songs as well. And also stay tuned for our In Conversation series with many famous musical artists. And um, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. There's much more. This is going to be our biggest year yet here in 2024. 